Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about state functions and path functions. So as you see here on the screen, there's an image of the state of Florida, which is the state in which I live. Uh, but actually this has nothing to do with the type of states we're going to be talking about today. I just um, couldn't really think of a good image to put on the title slide, so I just put uh, my home state on there. Anyway, so let's get on with uh, today's topic, shall we? So in the last video, we talked about the first law of thermodynamics. And within that video, we defined the term internal energy. And internal energy, remember, is the sum of all the kinetic and potential energies of the particles in a system. So you can think of internal energy as like the total energy content of a system. And we also learned about the two ways by which energy can flow between a system and its surroundings. The system, of course, being the part of the universe that you're looking at. And the surroundings, of course, is everything else in the universe that is not the system. And the two ways by which internal energy can flow between a system and its surroundings are through heat, which is uh, labeled by Q, and through work, which is denoted by W. So we get this equation here, where the change in internal energy is equal to the sum of the heat that is transferred and the work that is done between the system and its surroundings. Internal energy happens to be a so-called state function. So what does it mean for something to be a state function? Why is that important? Well, a state function is a property whose value depends only on the current state of the system and not how the system arrived at that state. So what do we mean by state? What does it mean, the current state of the system? What does that mean? Well, the state of a system is defined by numerous different parameters, uh, such as temperature, pressure, volume, concentration, uh, what phase is it, so is it solid, liquid, gas, things like that. And the nice thing about state functions is that making or doing calculations with state functions is actually very easy. It's much more difficult uh, when you have properties whose values do depend on the path, and those are appropriately called path functions. So we can get an idea for uh, a state function versus a path function um, with this parking garage analogy. So a state function would be like the height of a parking garage. The height of a parking garage does not depend on how you climb the parking garage, how you get from the bottom to the top. But notice that we have two different routes by which somebody can climb up this parking garage. Path A here shows uh, a gentleman in a yellow t-shirt uh, taking an elevator up the garage. And then path B here shows a gentleman in a blue t-shirt who is uh, pushing his car up the ramps for some reason. Um, must be a very strong gentleman. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, there's two different paths by which you can climb the height of this garage. So again, the height of that garage would be like a state function. Again, its value only depends on the current state, whether you're at the bottom or at the top. Um, and then the path that you take to get there, that would be, of course, a path function. And so, like I said before, doing calculations with state functions is actually very easy because if you want to calculate the change in internal energy or the change in any state function, it's simply going to be the difference between final and initial states. So for internal energy, we get this equation here where we have uh, the change in internal energy is equal to final internal energy minus initial internal energy. Now in the event of a chemical reaction, well your final state is going to be the products of the chemical reaction, while your initial state is going to be the reactants of that chemical reaction. So delta E for a chemical reaction is going to be equal to the difference of the, um, the internal energy of the products minus the internal energy of the reactants. And then whether or not your uh, chemical reaction absorbs energy or releases energy into the surroundings is going to depend on the relative values of the internal energy for your products and the internal energy for your reactants. If the internal energy of your reactants is greater than that of your products, then you're going to have a negative delta E value, which means overall energy is being released into the surroundings. If the opposite is true, so that, so uh, in other words, if the internal energy of your products is greater than that of your reactants, then you're going to get a positive delta E value. And that means that overall 
energy is being absorbed into the system. So just to get an idea of um, how this works and state versus path functions and all that business, uh, let's consider um, a collision between two billiard balls. So we're going to consider this type of collision right here where the cue ball slams into the eight ball uh, so it's traveling it has some kinetic energy slams into the eight ball and we're going to assume that the cue ball is going to immediately stop in its tracks after that collision and the implication there is that all of the kinetic energy that that cue ball had before the right before the collision has now been transferred to the eight ball so that means that the kinetic energy of that cue ball is now zero there is none because it's completely still it's totally at rest and we're going to assume uh, that the cue ball is our system uh, throughout these examples I've, I've got two examples for you so the first example that i'm going to show you uh, with this um, type of collision uh, just to get a better idea of uh, state and path functions is if we're playing pool on a very smooth pool table so if we're playing pool on a smooth pool table that means that as the cue ball travels down the table it's going to lose only a little tiny bit of its kinetic energy to the table surface as heat so even though it's a smooth table there still is going to be there's still there are still going to be these uh, microscopic little uh, bumps and imperfections in the felt that are going to cause uh, friction uh, through which the cue ball is going to lose a little bit of its kinetic energy to the table surface in the form of heat. And it's going to eventually slow down. And if the table were big enough, it would eventually stop. So let's assume that the cue ball is traveling with an initial kinetic energy of 5.0 joules, okay? And then let's say that along the way to its destination, the cue ball is going to lose only half of a joule of, kinetic, of its kinetic energy in the form of heat to the table surface. So that means that at the time of the collision, the cue ball now has 4.5 joules of energy to transfer to that eight ball. So it originally had 5.0 joules of energy, and then it lost half of a joule along the way. And so five minus a half of a joule, that's gonna be four and a half joules that that cue ball has available to give to the eight ball to get it moving. Now, after the collision, again, the cue ball, we, we're assuming here that the cue ball is completely still so that means it has no kinetic energy because it's not in motion and now the eight ball is the only one that's moving so let's see if we can't calculate or figure out the heat the work and the internal energy change of this process now the work that is done uh, was going to be the energy that's transferred uh, to the eight ball because remember work is defined as the result of a force acting through a distance okay so the work is going to be negative 4.5 joules notice that it's negative because it's actually being done on the surroundings so again we're assuming that the cue ball is our system so it did 4.5 joules of work on that eight ball the amount of heat is going to be negative 0.5 joules because again that heat was lost by the system to its surroundings and then to calculate delta E it would simply be just the sum of the work and the heat and we're going to get negative 5.0 joules okay so we have 4.5 joules of work being done on the surroundings half a joule of work of, uh, of heat being released into the surroundings and then we have uh, overall 5 joules of energy being given off to the surroundings on this smooth table. Now let's say uh, we go to the bad side of town where they have uh, really run down pool halls and we're playing on a, a, a horrible rough table with all kinds of beer stains and cigarette butts and all that or cigarette burns and all that kind of stuff uh, on the table. Well if we're, if we're playing on a rough table that means that the cue ball is going to lose quite a bit of kinetic energy to that table surface and again it's going to be in the form of heat. So let's assume the same sort of uh, situation here where initially the cue ball is traveling uh, with five joules of kinetic energy. And again, since that table surface is so rough, now it's going to lose a lot more heat to the table surface. So we're going to say that the heat lost by the cue ball to the table surface is going to be 3.0 joules. 
which means that now it only has two joules available to be transferred to uh, the uh, to be transferred to the eight ball in the form of work. And then, of course, after the collision, we're making the assumption that the cue ball completely stops in its tracks, and so the kinetic energy after the collision is still going to be zero joules. Uh, only this time, the eight ball is not going to travel nearly as fast and nearly as far because it only had two joules of energy. Uh, as opposed to the four and a half joules that it had in the previous example. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, the internal energy change for this process. So the work, that's going to be negative 2.0 joules again because uh, that's how much energy was uh, given off to the eight ball um, at the time of the collision. The amount of heat, that's going to be negative 3.0 joules. That's the amount of heat that was lost to that table surface uh, by that cue ball. And then if we calculate delta E, it's going to be the sum of the work and the heat, and we're going to get negative 5.0 joules. So on the smooth table, we got negative 5.0 joules. On the rough table, we also got negative 5.0 joules. Hmm, that's strange. And the reason why those two values are the same is because of the initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy. In both cases, the initial kinetic energy was 5.0 joules. The final kinetic energy was zero joules. And as long as your initial and final values are the same, essentially, both your initial values are the same, both your final values are the same, uh, since internal energy is a state function, uh, that means that the internal energy change is going to be the same for both of those process processes regardless of the type of table. So again, um, the internal energy change, it's a state function, so it does not depend on the path. It does not depend on how smooth or rough that table is. Obviously, the work that is done and the heat that is given off, those both depend heavily on the type of table. So those are what, what we would call path functions. So work is a path function. Heat is also a path function. But internal energy is a state function. It only depends on your final and your initial values. It does not depend on the path that you take to get there. Okay, I hope you found this video at least somewhat helpful, and um, good luck to you.